When they first asked me to do this talk, one of their first questions to me was, why did it take you so long to come forward? You see, in 2005, when I was 19 years old, I was raped. I was drugged and raped by a Filipino celebrity who is still on TV today. They asked me, why didn't I come out sooner, knowing that this man was a rapist and could possibly do more harm? I think that all rape victims go through that process in their head. The conflict between coming forward and exposing a criminal of the worst kind and staying silent for their own sanity and protection. Being raped is one of the most horrible, one of the worst violations of the human mind, spirit, and body. The traumas that victims experience have been compared to the kind of trauma that soldiers are exposed to during war. Being raped is terrifying. The human mind is not equipped to deal with it or process it without help because it is an unnatural thing. Sex, contrary to popular belief, is not an innate need in people. It is not like breathing, eating, or sleeping. We do not die if we do not have sex. Therefore, rape is purely a choice by others to inflict harm on another human being to take something from them without consent. It is very much a power and control issue rather than a sexual one. When a person chooses to abuse another, the victim goes into shock. They often feel very confused. Feelings of guilt, shame, and self-blame are some of the first reactions because how does one explain to themselves that another human being wanted to hurt them? How do they understand that it is not their fault? It seems as though there is a flaw in the system. People are quick to judge and say, oh, well, so many people fake being raped. As if they know this to be true, right? On the contrary, in a study done in the United States a few years ago, they found that only 2% of all reported rape cases were found to be false, which means that a whopping 98% of them were true. Yet still people claim that most rape cases are fake. Here in the Philippines, we've never had a survey on how many reported rape cases are fake, and I'll tell you why. As it stands, we only have a very small fraction of the actual number of rapes in the country because people are still too afraid to come forward about having been raped. Our culture of shame and saving face have meant that most victims would rather live and die in silence than face the backlash of society's judgments on something as horrific as rape. You see, in our country, instead of crucifying the rapist, we nail the victims to a proverbial stake and we throw stones. Now, how do I know this to be true, you might ask? Well, I'm going to tell you. In 2014, I read a news headline in which another woman accused the man who raped me of having done the same thing to her. Reading some of the comments against the woman, which included statements such as liar, whore, attention seeker in them, I was outraged. I took to social media and I fought back telling people they had no right to treat her that way that they had no idea who a rapist was or could be, and that they shouldn't promote rape culture. Privately on my personal Facebook, I wrote a message of celebration. Karma from the universe, justice finally after nine years. Of course, someone leaked my statements to the press and my life was destroyed. And I had known all along that this is what would have happened had I come forward. You see, a few years after I was raped, I had spoken to a friend of mine who was also in the showbiz industry. To my surprise, I discovered that she and I had been through a similar experience and that her perpetrator is a very good friend of the man who raped me. She told me, this kind of stuff happens all the time, but you can't talk about it. If you do, you won't work in the industry anymore. Nine years later, after another woman claimed to have been raped, 
by the man who raped me, I found out just how true that statement was. I stopped working, and not by choice. I was in the running for several jobs that I was supposed to host for, and they all dropped me. I couldn't get hired for anything. My management, they tried to save me. They tried to get me to retract my statements and stay quiet, but the damage was done. No matter how professional and experienced of a host I was, it meant nothing. The industry I had grown up in since I was 18 years old had chewed me up, spat me out, and left me out in the cold, just like I had known would happen all those years ago. And as if that wasn't enough, I was publicly destroyed, bashed by thousands of people calling me horrific names. My family and friends disappeared, and I was too scared to even be home alone by myself. I even received death threats for speaking up. Now, some people might ask, why keep speaking up then? Why continue this battle if it has cost you so much? Why not just stay quiet and walk away? Or my favorite, why don't you just file a case? It's interesting that I worked for the same media company as my rapist all those years ago because I was given very clear insight into the behind-the-scenes operations when it comes to something as scandalous as this. I suppose when you control the news and media, it is very easy to cover these things up. We all know how much fear is a factor in pe keeping people quiet here in the Philippines. I have seen and heard things that would make you never want to watch our television stations again. Women and men being groped and molested, raped and abused. Verbal abuse is a regular occurrence and is treated as the norm. Why don't you hear about this? Because the people that talk about it lose their jobs, that's why. In a country where people are uneducated and poor, many would rather sustain their families than be a hero. They also turn a blind eye to it because they know that the higher-ups are going to do nothing about it. Celebrities who abuse, rape, and molest are allowed to continue this behavior because they are protected by the people that they work for. Much like the recent ousting of priests for pedophilia worldwide being ignored by the institution they represent. The uncovering of Jimmy Savile's pedophilic encounters ignored by the BBC and the many alleged victims of Bill Cosby. Only now feeling brave enough to come forward, also being slandered in the press. Sexual predators are very good at hiding in plain sight, in positions that offer sufficient power to get away with their crimes, especially in a country like ours, where corruption infects every vessel of the government's beating heart. For the general population, however, many really have no idea what is going on. You see, for many reasons we will not delve into, the issue of sex education has been kept on a very unstable platform. We have only recently started to implement any real sexual education for our youth in the past year. I was told by a few people that they had no idea that they had experienced rape until they heard my story, including a young man who was raped in a gym sauna by his peer. There was a woman who said, I can say no, meaning she had never known she didn't have to have sex when she was told to. If you are never encouraged to talk about sex, much less rape, how would you ever know the difference? For those of you who might think it absurd that people would not know about rape, I ask you to now consider the following facts, okay? Did you know that the law on rape was only changed in 1997? Did you know that the law used to state that rape was a crime against chastity? and that if you were not a virgin, it could be used against you in a court of law to prove that you must not have been raped because you were no longer a virgin and you must have wanted it? In 1997, this law was changed and rape was declared a crime against humanity, only with prompting from the UN for our laws to change. Now, you would think that the judges and lawyers presiding in these kinds of cases would know that the law has been amended and therefore rule for or against said cases with the new facts and laws in mind, right? We went to go and visit a judge who mistakenly said to me that rape was a crime against chastity. I corrected him and said, sir, actually it's a crime against humanity. You know what he did? He laughed at me. 
Then he proceeded to tell me exactly who the people were in the government who were protecting the man who raped me from going to court and jail. You see, the man who raped me has never seen a jail cell. Even though rape is a heinous crime and a non-bailable offense, he has never once been to jail, even though three women tried to file cases against him. All three women were predictably crucified, and their cases were dismissed with outrageous rape culture in the dismissals. Why didn't she bite his penis? Or why didn't she scream when the law clearly states that as long as a victim's statement is inherently credible, that is probable cause enough to have a case filed against an individual for rape and send them to jail without bail. They never said anything about a victim's credibility having to come up against personal biases of those who are uneducated about rape. To quote one of the top lawyers in our country, the ordinary courts do not have briefings on rape and rape culture. The people in ordinary courts who preside over hearings are literally going in blind. The general public said that the girls were looking for attention, trying to be famous, and the one I loved the most is what they dubbed me an ambulance chaser, trying to ride a rapist coattails for fame. My question is, what fame? Notoriety is more like it. My life was threatened. I received messages such as, it would only take a bullet to the head to kill you. And you're a liar, a whore. You should be ashamed of yourself. I hope your family gets raped. Personal pictures of family and friends were used as propaganda against me. Even a photo of me hugging one of my best friends who was murdered in 2009 was taken and had slut written across it to try and smear me in the public eye. Someone even wrote to me and said, if women who were raped in World War II could get over it, so should you. The repeated cries from the comfort women from the Japanese occupation, who are now in their 80s, calling for a public apology for the crimes committed against them, prove that they are definitely not over it, and they are still being ignored. Not to mention, uh, all the girls, hmm? yeah. Not to mention that the people they said were behind the fake rape cases are millionaires spending their own money trying to put a rapist away. The public tried to claim it was about money, but what would millionaire businessmen want with an actor's pittance wages? They were not without fault. They assaulted him, but in a country whose justice system takes eight months sometimes for a rape case to even see a courtroom for the first deliberation, and court cases can take years. For some reason, the men who beat up my rapist went to jail in record time. It was then I knew what we were really dealing with. In my quest for the truth, after I was bashed and abused, I started to ask myself, why? And why is a very important question that we must ask ourselves if we ever want to know the truth. Why was it my rapist was being protected? Why was it people were talking about rape as if they knew what it was, when clearly in an uneducated country like ours where abuse and rape are kept quiet, they blatantly didn't have a clue? While I was searching, the answers found me in the victims here in the Philippines. Unbeknownst to me, I had become a beacon of light for people who had been raped, like a lighthouse in the darkest of fogs. They came to me with their stories, and each and every single time, I cried. These are stories that would make someone think twice about raping and abusing anyone ever again. I heard from a girl who had been raped repeatedly throughout her life by her father. The rape didn't stop with her either, but extended over to her younger, and older sisters. By the time they escaped their home, they didn't want to press charges against their father because of a sick sense of loyalty we have ingrained into our people, that they must respect their elders even when their elders have not respected them. Even their mother didn't want to press charges because she didn't want to lose her husband and be left alone with children and no way to feed them. I heard of a boy who was anally raped and beaten by his drunken high father, whose mother then retracted her case against him for fear of the shame and scandal. 
The little boy was only three years old. I heard about a woman who had been raped at gunpoint and forced to marry her rapist. She stayed with him for 19 years and had three children before she got away. Women who are drugged and raped by their employers and friends, children who are raped by their uncles, aunties, fathers, mothers, and house help, the 11-month-old baby that was raped and left under a jeepney to die, the 8-year-old that was raped in Belibid prison. The last one made me so angry, I wrote to the Secretary of the Justice Department publicly telling her that their inability to be efficient in convicting rapists has encouraged perpetrators to be more bold about raping people, now including children, in a place where justice is meant to be served. The message fell on deaf ears, and this proves my point. If the government and justice system have failed to educate our people about sex and rape, and if they have failed to ensure that even our lawmakers are fully up to date on laws so that rape cases can be tried accurately and fairly, so as to ensure the apprehension of rapists, who is it we are supposed to turn to for help? People say, why not go to a help desk? Government help desks are just as ineffective as the justice system. All they do is tell you to file a case. It's no wonder that we have an astoundingly low success rate. According to PNP statistics, there are almost two rapes reported every hour. With the fear of reporting being so considerable, there is no real way to determine the true number of rapes committed each year. The government is well aware of this, but there has been absolutely no movement towards trying to be more effective in protecting its people from one of the worst crimes against humanity imaginable. I know this because I've been raped. I'm not the only one. Our country has become so ill-equipped to deal with this issue that our child prostitution situation is one of the worst in the world. Children and babies are now being pimped by their own mothers and sold to foreigners for sex. Such is the devastating degree and effect of our government's inability to protect its people. 75% of reported rape cases are children. My questions to you in closing are these. Why is it that a problem as huge and life-destroying as this has been ignored for so long? Why is it educational programs against rape and child abuse haven't been vehemently pushed in schools and in the general public? Why is it that most of you in this room would not be able to tell me what accurately constitutes rape according to the law. To catch a rapist is very simple. It doesn't take a courtroom full of people and a jury to catch them. It takes unbiased, educated individuals, the testimony of the victim, and analysis from, prof from professional psychiatrists who are trained to deal with rape and abuse. Educating people about rape and abuse is not difficult either. In Hong Kong, where I grew up, they don't have this kind of rape problem. Why? Because we were taught sex education in school. Even with just the wide reach of the media here, to have sexual education for people on TV or public service announcements on the damage abuse and rape cause people, someone is going to listen. It may even encourage those who have been raped to come forward so we can have open dialogue on a subject that has been kept in the dark for far too long. Anything is also far better than the nothing that we have now. The systems in place are ineffective and have been for a long time, so who is really protecting us? What will it take for all of you to start caring? When will you start to fight for yourselves as people? When will you start to fight for your human rights? When the rights of human beings have been ignored, then the people must fight for their rights to be restored. I have been through a lot, and the cause and effect of my life is that I have chosen to fight for my rights as well as the rights of others. And I leave you today with one final question. Does it have to be your baby who gets raped before you start to care that there are rapists out there raping 
and abusing freely because they know that nobody cares enough to catch them. Thank you. Mm -hmm.